Stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch, we're so gallantly streaming. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in. The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. All right, so you see, usually, nice right the stage out. spike. Oh my gosh, such low damage. There would that up be absolutely uh, nice uh, jab there. Oh. oh. <laughs> That was, that was, oh, that was. So now Pikachu really having his, more of his way with Jigglypuff here. A very nearly a knockout. Oh, there it is. Drag down Folks. into critical with Thunder. Yeah. All right, so. Nice. Amazing. With the down spike. If I'm in that position, if the young one, I literally just stand there. Yeah. Be Oh, oh, gets him with the fun dog at night. Nice. Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Oh, come on. Oh, well, there he is. There he is. <laughs> Man, neutral <laughs> got two kills on that one. They're both literally at 150. Nice! Yes! Great job. They're <laughs> seeing Oh, oh nice. good reflect. Link is actually one of the best. Nice. nice. Good read Pikachu. there. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us here for Faulkner Esports production. We are going to be playing Super Smash Bros. this evening, and it's going to be against Southeast Missouri State. So very much looking forward to the gameplay that we're going to be experiencing here tonight. I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt, and this is my broadcast partner. Hi, everyone. I'm Caleb O.T. Yep, so you have double Caleb's, dose Caleb's, as they call us. Caleb's great. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the two of us will be bringing you all of your commentary this evening for Smash Bros. For those of you who may not know or have uh, only been watching us this season, Caleb Oto was actually one of the starters on the blue team last season yep. until he abandoned us to go do marching band. Traitor. No, but we love him, and that's why we're having him back. Uh, but... <laughs> But um, no, we're very glad to have Caleb Ote here and appreciate him giving some of his time up to do some commentary for the game this evening. Uh, Southeastern Missouri State is actually a team that we've played before, so this should be an interesting matchup. And before we go ahead and jump into the action, we're getting signed up and getting our lag test started. So while we're doing that, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and meet the team and take a peek inside Registar USA High Res Arena, specifically the Skyloft area where our Smash Bros uh, area is. So you'll see there standing at the computer, that is Scourge, otherwise known as Seth Dawson. He's the captain of the team, and uh, he's busy talking to the other teams, but uh, he's getting everything ready on that side. And then over behind him in the chair behind the couch, that's going to be Jehonan, uh, John, who's getting ready and uh, looks like he's probably not going to be first since he's sitting behind there. And then over to his right, our left, uh, you see Josh Chouchi, otherwise known as Moniker. And then on the couch, uh, the one closest to us, not Keandre, who's kind of hiding out there in the back with the mask on, uh, the one closest to us, that's D-Man, otherwise known as Darian Rogan. So they're getting ready. And uh, I got to say, 
Keandre's pants look a lot like final uh, form Sora, so I don't know <laughs> if that was planned or not, but very much giving me uh, final form Sora vibes. So it looks like our our lag test is up, and so they've got randoms in. Uh, so we're going to be doing that for a second. But Caleb, have you been able to see many of the Smash Bros. games this season? No, I haven't. Um, really, every pretty much every time the games have been going on, we've had band practice. But right, uh, just from hanging around the team and watching them during some of the practices, I can, I can tell that we've definitely made some significant improvements since since last year, and we brought a lot of really talented new people in. Yeah, we would have loved Excited. to have you on this year, but uh, it is true that overall, I do think our team is is better this year. Uh, oh, sure. We've had an extremely talented recruiting class, yeah. and uh, we, we're better not just on the blue team, but on the white team as well. Uh, made a lot of improvements, made some uh, changes, and of course, Seth is still here, but other than him, the entire blue team are completely new players. Man, that's crazy. Yep. Uh, and Maybe. white team, the only uh, player we have that's consistent on that one is Will. So okay. we are having a few more returners than that. We do have Dish, who's returned as an alternate. We have Charlie, who is not officially on the team, but returns as an alternate. Same with KP. Uh, but yeah, this is almost a completely new team this year. Okay. I can tell we still have some of the same flavor as last year, but uh -huh. again, we mix in some, some new characters as well. So I'm looking forward to, to the rest of the season. Yeah, we do have a lot of the same uh, characters, a lot of the same mains are represented, but we have several new ones too. For example, mm. Co uh, Connor plays Lucario. He's on the white team. We've never had a Lucario player. Of course, D-Man mains Pit, who you mained last yeah. year, so that was fun uh, to have a, a, a returning Pit player. He plays a very different Pit than you, though. Uh, one of the things is his uh, he likes to play a little bit more range and a little bit more aggression, mm. um, so he doesn't play back as much as you did. Uh, and not that one is better than the other. It's just kind of a different play style. So yeah. uh, have you played his pit before? I've I played. It was very interesting because uh, we were both spamming Nair and using the <laughs> Orbitars like the right. whole game. It was very interesting. Yep. All right. So it looks like they're about to get ready for the next match. Um, but it looks like they are going to be starting with Reality is going to be the first combatant from South Southwest East Missouri State or SEMO as the locals call it. And I can confirm that because our admissions counselor, Matt, actually used to live near SEMO. So. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see a Zero Suit Samus versus Pit, and we are starting out with D-Man. So they start out very aggressive, uh, Zero Suit trying to get in there, um, trying to get a, an, some early damage, but Darian spamming there again like you were talking yep, about. That's the mark of a true pit player. <laughs> right, lots of there. <laughs> I can tell you though, this this uh, Zero Suit is very aggressive, but he's doing a good job of kind of stopping her from uh, locking him into a combo. Oh yeah, but very good shield and then out of shield smash right there. Uh, good read by Darian. All right, so now one thing that I noticed too, that Darian doesn't use Orbitars quite as much as you do, mm -hmm. and that would have been a good example of where he could have really used Orbitar to sort of send her attack back at her. That's It can be a very effective tool against Zero Suit. Oh, nice border there, and gets under platform. You can see he does a really good job of aiming his arrows. Like yeah. his command of uh, arrow control is just extremely impressive. Oh, and a nice, mm, nice back bear. here. Nice. Good job. There we go. Good job. So Faulkner takes first blood in this round. Darian, cooking. You know, one thing that uh, is really probably helping Darian out here is that he's played Zero Suit a lot because Cam is a Zero Suit mm. main. So it probably helps him that he's familiar with this moveset. Oh, and a nice little down smash there to get her away from him. Good use of the Orbitar. Yes, there. I love Aerial Orbitar. It's one of my favorite moves that Pick can use. Oh. Oh, good nice job. shield. And you know, this Zero Suit, granted, Zero Suit is not a character that minds being in the air much. Oh, classic Zero Suit combo right there. Uh, but Darian doing an excellent job of juggling her so far, keeping her off of her off of her toes. Good job with the down spell. Very much so. The move I could have used a lot more. 
Oh, trading off a little, but he releases shield a little too early. And gonna use forward air there. Follow up. Okay. No, go ahead. I'm saying he's doing such a good job of like predicting her movements and not retreating, but using the shield to kind of stay in close. Mm -hmm. Keep the momentum going. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was saying. He plays a much more aggressive pit than you do, because uh, you like to play back a lot, which, I mean, frankly, I'm a fan of, because, you know, I'm I'm Young Link, and I like the zone a lot. But uh, he likes to play a very sort of in-your-face pit, which is really interesting. Oh, nice read there. Catches her as she jumps. So Faulkner maintains a lead here. If he can get her off without losing another stock, that would be huge. Granted, that's going to be tough to do. But going into this with two stocks ourselves would be really helpful. Yeah, good use of Orbitars there. But unfortunately, Zero Suit is able to keep him up in the air. Good job. Yep. Ooh. Oh, wow. That move does a lot of knockback. Yeah, Side B has a ridiculous amount of knockback. People sort of underestimate Zero Suit. I think it's because of how she was in Brawl, that like she was basically a sub character. Like, she wasn't even a real good character on her own. You were basically just trying to stay alive until you got another Final Smash to get back to being Samus again. Um, but Zero Suit is not that way anymore. She's much well, she's much better balanced in this yeah. game. All right, nice read. Ah. Uh oh, grabs through shield. Oh, classic pit of smash. Yep. Ledge. Nope, it gets caught by the forward air. Or, sorry, side B. Forward air there. Oh, and he read it well, but mm. was just like a half second too late there. Oh no, and gets caught by it. Oh, Man, so what a close. comeback for Simo. That was an excellent match. It was. Uh, just hate that it ended that way. Especially when Darian was doing so well, but that's the thing about Zero Suit. Yeah. Um, Zero Suit is a very opportunistic combatant, and if she gets you in the right situation, especially when you're stunned like that, there's really yeah. almost nothing you can do if you're at a certain damage. Yeah. Like, no matter how skilled a player you are, you're not going to get out of that. Um, so, man, really unfortunate, but Darian still having a strong showing and knocking first combatant down to a single stock, so hopefully that's a trend we can see continue. This Zero Suit, a really good player, and you can tell uh, was just kind of like baiting and waiting for those opportunities. I think Darian might have gotten a little bit off of his game there at the end because you noticed he was playing back a lot more and being defensive, and I think he was so uh, worried about losing another stock that he wound up playing not to lose versus yeah. playing to win. And that can, that can be an unfortunate uh, thing that happens with a lot of athletes as well. So as a pit player, were there anything that was there anything that you noticed that he should have done differently, or um, it might just it it might just be a kind of a play style thing, but uh, sure. definitely I he was not really using the orbitage too much in the first half of the match, and right. he really started using them more in the second half, and I thought that was really really good. I agree. I I thought his use of orbitars was really good in the second half. He yeah. used them as a get down move a lot. Um. Hey, uh, so, sorry about this. I know that this is not typically the way we do it on a broadcast, but Seth, I'm tagged into their uh, chat right now, so do you need me to say something to them real quick while it restarts? What do you want me to say? All right. So... A little unorthodox having us chat with the other team live here on the air, but. Say another thing that. Uh, Damian... Okay, they have banned. Sorry, sorry, no, Caleb. sorry. They have banned Final Destination, Kalos, and Town and Country. But yeah, so they have banned Final Destination, Kalos, and Town and & Country, uh, which honestly kind of makes sense. Those are stages that traditionally Zero Suit wouldn't perform super well on, uh, especially Final Destination. That would be the one, because she really excels at under-platform. Like mm. I would say of all the characters I can think of off the top of my head right now, she 
Chi or Pikachu probably have the best under platform game. Um, and even Pikachu is somewhat limited by short range. So she might actually hold that title exclusively now that I think about it. So you understand why she would not want one. Okay, so Seth is back. So we're, we're back in the game. Uh, you can understand, though, why she would not want a stage with a lot of, uh, without any platforms. Yeah. And Town and & Country and uh, Kalos both have those aw awkward platforms that are kind of off to the side but really open in the middle. Yeah. And so you can see why she'd want something with lots of platforms so she can kind of play around there. So it looks like Small Battlefield is going to be the pick. So wise move, Small Battlefield is the one that's going to give the most open space in the middle. Having a little Mac was really uh, would really be best on a Final Destination, but Small Battlefield is going to be the best out of the available uh, ones. And so here we go, Little Mac versus Zero Suit. I have to be honest, I'm kind of surprised mm. to see him go Little Mac first round, especially since uh, Zero Suit, which has a ton of range, but yeah. he does only have one stock to get, so if he can just get a quick KO. That's something the little Mac does at that light. Yep. Uh-oh. Mm. Yep. That would have killed if he had been at a little higher damage, so no, props to him for... Oh. Nope. Mm. That's the problem with little Mac. He has no recovery. Yeah. main objective here is to just stay on the stage. Yep. Don't go off stage. But uh, Zero Suit can be a very dangerous juggler, and that's what he has to avoid. Mm. Like, he's got to make sure that the fight stays on his terms. He's already lost one stock. Yeah. Can't afford to lose a couple more. Oh, Ooh. no. Whew. Thankfully, he was able to get out of it. And he's got the KO. Let's see if he can make any use of it here. Mm. Nope. He misses that one. He's gonna have to do something to get his feet back on the ground. He does. Nice. Yeah, he's in trouble here. Yep, and that's gonna be a KO. Like I told you, that under-platform play is just so good. Alright. And looks like that's going to be it for that one. Unfortunately, Faulkner does lose a couple of stocks there, which means that they're going to be going into this uh, down two stocks and being forced to stay with Little Mac, so... Uh, that's one of the biggest issues with Little Mac is that he's super easy to counterpick because he has so many glaring weaknesses. Yeah. Um, well, I say that. It's not that he has a ton of glaring weaknesses. It's that he has one extremely large weakness no that's super easy to ex yeah. uh, to exploit. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's that's the more correct way to say it. So, I mean, right here, if they've got anybody with any range like Zero Suit or somebody that just excels at offstage play, It'd be really easy to get a, an easy KO here. And like you mentioned, this Samus is really, really good at baiting and trapping. And so a character like Little Mac, who's always going and always moving, might it would be hard to play against a character like Samus. Right. It looks like they're sure. going to be sending in Impulse. And uh, it says MK. MK? Is that a reference to a character? MK. Maybe I just need to look at my roster here or something, but I, I'm blanking on that. Uh, oh, it's Meta Knight. Okay, so they'll be playing as Meta Knight. Again, a very, very fast character, really easy. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of surprised it wouldn't be my first choice against uh, Little Mac, because 
little uh, Meta Knight can get launched pretty easy, mm. but um, they obviously feel confident with it. So, and it looks like it's going to be small battlefield again. Is anyone on the team uh, main Meta Knight? Not that I'm aware of. I Except mean, for John, he made that. I, I mean, John kind of can play anything, yeah. but uh, he doesn't really main Meta Knight in the strictest sense. This might right. be a character we're unfamiliar with. All right, and now they're down to. They're gonna taunt, and it's off to the races. Going with the uh, pink Meta Knight skin. And so far, lots of attacks launched, but until just a second ago, no, none hitting, and already Little Mac is up to 46. But with one punch, Meta Knight goes up to 25. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he just hits like a truck. Oh. Yep. And a very easy KO for Southeastern Missouri. Or Southeast Missouri State. Southeastern Missouri actually does exist, but that's a completely different university. Oh, okay. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, so there you go. Um, that's going to be it for that match. And now Faulkner behind by three whole stocks. So there's going to have to have somebody uh, make up some ground here. If I were in their position, Meta Knight's not an easy one to to counterpick, but I'd probably throw in John at this point. I mean, Ridley doesn't have any real big mm. glaring uh, weaknesses to Meta Knight, and Meta Knight has a lot of tiny attacks. Uh, granted, Ridley's a very big target, but I still think that he's probably the one you wind up going with. It looks like they have, uh, we have banned Battlefield, Pokemon Stadium 2, and Kalos. And they're sending in small battlefield. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the uh, previous message. So it looks like they're actually going to be going battlefield instead. So standard battlefield, one with the top platform. So. We'll see how that goes. But I think Ridley is a good pick against this. He has a lot of different ways to really hurt Meta Knight. And Meta Knight, who tends to be a small speed character, Ridley will do really well because he has a lot of these big sweeping attacks. So I think Ridley is a really good pick here. Meta Knight already is in the Yep. And Ridley doing a good job of... Mm. There he goes. And Meta Knight with really good... I believe that was back here. Alright. And Ridley now back in control. Hopefully he can keep advantage here. Oh, and going for a uh, star KO there. And, well, instead gets the uh, screen KO. Meta Knight with a good attack out of shield there. Man, really good off ledge control. This Meta Knight has excellent aerials. And in a very surprised twist of events here, uh, John not able to take a stock, stock yet. And nice. there it is. Knock him out, John. Okay, so John now adjusting to the playstyle a little bit more. Able to predict the moves a little bit.
All right, nice, nice way to combat that uh, side B there. Mm. Oh, and it hits from underneath stage. You don't see that very often. Gonna use fireball to ledge guard. Then gonna use a neutral air. Nice. nice. So John making a comeback here. Let's see if he can do a restock comeback. And a little sword flurry, which ends in John being able to counter. Oh, surprised he didn't go for a command grab. Oh, and... Man, what a stage spike there. Yeah. So, unfortunately, John not able to take uh, every stock there, able to get two. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, what an effort for him to come from behind there because he was really struggling in the early game but then came back and wound up taking two stocks off of him uh, with only one stock left. So, uh, obviously not the, the ideal result, but definitely one you have to give him credit for for being able to do that and do it so definitely, quickly. Definitely, definitely. I don't um, know how too many uh, players we have that could come back like that except for him. So Yeah, for sure. That's and I really impressive. think it was because um, he he seemed to really start learning the other guy's patterns. Yeah. And if that if that had been a, a five-stock match instead of, for example, a three-stock match, I think John would have won it, won it pretty handedly. But it took him too much time to adjust in order to be able to win it outright. So now they're down to their final combatant, which, of course, is going to be the captain, Seth. So he's going to be going in and going to be playing Samus. Samus is a pretty good matchup for Meta Knight. The only thing he's going to have to worry about is this Meta Knight has shown that he is so good off stage and it does mm. such a good job at getting stage spikes. I think that Seth might want to play a little bit more in the middle yeah. than he's used to and range a little bit more because he plays a very aggressive Samus. Yeah. And so he may want to play a little bit more defensively in this round, but we'll see where it goes. He only has to, thanks to John, he only has to take one stock. Man, and I fall so fast. Oh yeah, he's a little guy. But despite that, he's very heavy. With all that armor he wears, I guess. Oh no. I've been mistaken. No, no, he's got it. So a nice spam of up air there by Simo, but Seth able to answer it by getting up underneath him and pushing him off stage. Very nice up air there. Oh, and a almost fully charged charge shot. Oh, man. And actually, the problem there was that Meta Knight is too short. If he had been just a hair taller, he would have actually got caught in that up air. But because Meta Knight's hitbox is so tiny, Seth not able to make a connection. That would have worked against most characters. Wow. Oh, wow. That was excellent. It was. But now, now Faulkner is down to their last stock. It seems like Seth's game has just evolved so much since last season. It really has. It, it's gotten significantly better. Um, so, you know, hopefully we're going to be able to see him uh, evolve even more as the season goes on. But you're right. I mean, you were working with Seth a lot last season and you can yeah. tell like he's really upped his game. He really has. He really has. It's been impressive to watch. But uh all right, so it looks like they are going to be playing Byleth. And they have and we have banned Halabastion, Town and Country, and Final Destination. So Byleth is an interesting one to go up against Samus. 
Because yeah. Samus, of course, has uh, quite a bit of range. Byleth really only has the one really long range move, which is his neutral B, the Fell Knot. But he also has several sort of mid range options, which Samus also has. Sure. So it'll be interesting. In a lot of ways, these characters are very similar. Byleth hits harder, whereas Samus is a little bit more mobile. But we'll see how that plays itself out. All right, so that's one stock. Two stocks. And they taunt. And here we go. And immediately starting out with that range that we were talking about. Oh, went for actually a spike there. That was funny. So, one of the things that helps Seth here is that he actually mained Byleth for a little while. Mm. And because of that, he knows you can tell, like, the way that he stayed exactly just far enough out of range to avoid his up B there earlier. That's something that Seth knows because he used to be a Byleth main himself. And so, because of that, you're seeing him make some of those decisions uh, to stay away from him and stay just out of his range. That can be very valuable against Byleth. Oh, and gets him with the spear. All right. Man, Byleth, you can tell how powerful he is. It just does so much damage to shield there. I'm going to use missile, spam some range, and then go in for his forward air. Able to use a good up air there under platform. You know, if Byleth were a slightly less heavy character, he probably could have just up thrown and pulled, but not able to do that because of the nature of it. Ooh, oh, wow. Gets him with the spear. Feet. No! He's able to down spike with the... with down B. So... Man. Heck of a match by Seth trying to come back though, but just able, uh, not able to come up with the win there. Just comes up barely short. Um, and uh, according to him, there was a little bit of lag there, uh, and that really hurt him. But he got a little, uh, looks like got a little antsy there at the end. Yeah. But anyway, so that's unfortunately going to be it for this round, which means that Faulkner loses to Simo in the first round by a score of, uh, I believe that was zero to six. So, uh, or six to 12, you know, they never have really finalized how the scoring supposed to be. So it's really funny. You'll look at your scoreboard because different people input the scores at the end and nobody has decided whether or not the score is how many KOs you got or how many stocks you had left. Yeah. And so some scores will be like zero to six, and then some scores will be twelve to eleven, and like so we the, the count same. Down. Yeah, so we count down live on here just so people know how many stocks are left. But when we yeah. report scores, we actually report the opposite. We report how many KOs you got. Okay. So like our score from last week was eleven to twelve. Okay. So. Yep. But good question there. But yeah, this is a best of three. So just reminding our audience, we do have another round coming up. And if Faulkner can win this one, then they just go to a rubber match there at the end. So Simo with one win under their belt. Hopefully Faulkner can make a comeback here. I really think we can we can turn this one around. This time we'll make some better choices on putting who in in into what uh what order. And we're yeah, kind of starting to feel them a little bit more. So I have to be honest, my my biggest like head scratching move from the first one is why they use Little Mac. Yeah, uh, because that really just kind of threw me off. Um, I'm not saying that it was an absolutely abysmal one, but picking Little Mac, especially against a character that has a lot of range opportunities, like that, I, I never really understood why that was the choice. But you know, you live and you learn. And uh, hopefully they can use that knowledge in the next one. Um, I think that had they been able to use Seth to kill Meta Knight, um, Ridley would probably be a much better matchup against Byleth. Yeah. Uh, Ridley just has a really good job, especially with John playing him, really good job of keeping control. And when the other player has control, Byleth is kind of worthless. Um, you know, it's very hard for Byleth to break combos because he's so heavy, because he's so slow. And so I think that having 
uh, a Ridley in there that really knows what he's doing would have been a better match than Samus. I'm not saying that Samus was a bad matchup by any stretch of the imagination, but um, uh, Ridley, I think, is a better option. And so some of those little things that you can kind of look back on on hindsight and see that you don't necessarily always catch in the first round uh, can really make a difference. So hopefully the guys are able to make those adjustments. Um, let's see. I almost wonder if putting uh, well, I I guess we'll probably put in put Darian in close to the front again, but if putting uh the pit against Violet would have been a good good decision as well. You know, I I could definitely see that being the case because especially with Pitt uh, being played much more aggressively by Darian, uh, it wouldn't have given him much time to set things up. And so I could definitely see that being good. Um, Byleth, in a lot of ways, plays similar to Ike, just has a little more range than him, and so yeah. I could see that being a good matchup. That's the character you definitely want to use the Orbitars against. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they will come if you take a hit, it's going to hurt. <laughs> it will hurt a lot. But by that same token, because Orbitars have that reflecting ability, like, let's say you were to fall into a fell knot to where that Byleth can't get out of. Yeah. That can be an instant KO. I've seen True. that happen multiple times. True. Uh, where you just happen to fall into a, a fell knot they can't cancel out of. All right, so here we're going to go with a Roy versus Josh's Little Mac. Um, Got to say, kind of surprised by this one again. Why go with Little Mac when you have Rob? Uh, Rob's a better matchup for Roy, but these are going to be two very close range characters. Um, and obviously Little Mac doing fairly well against him. Oh, and counters through Roy. Yeah, so these are very similar characters in a lot of ways. A lot of hard hitting, not great recovery. Mm. Uh, both have counters, and you're seeing that gameplay sort of play out here. Yeah, Josh is really just able to outmaneuver the Roy. Yep, and there you go. First KO only takes 41 damage. Nice. Oh, and uh, unfortunately, waste the KO there. Wow. wow. Just, uh, man, uh, you don't see a fully charged uh, neutral be there very often. Oh, wow. Oh, and gets a counter off. Oh, and tries to bait him into counter, but instead Roy able to grab there. Oh, and he does use the up B, but a little late. That's the thing about Little Mac and Roy. They're both pretty quick, but Roy does have the speed advantage. And now Roy very quickly able to even up the score again. Mm. Yep. Man. Wow. That Roy was able to turn the game around so quickly. Yeah. A quick turnaround. Well, uh, very fast turnaround for uh, Simo. The Red Hawks able to really push little mac off stage and i mean it was it was like night and day and that's the thing when you get two powerhouses like that um the game can get very swingy and yeah. we saw that happen that once roy had control and was able to get better reads off on josh there was just not much josh could do yeah um but you know, props to him on being able to do that. Roy is a character that has really started to rise in the metagame recently. Okay. And I really love to see that because I, you remember that I actually play a little Roy on yeah. the side. I, I don't main him, but I, I play a sub Roy. And uh, Roy has done really well recently because he has that combination of power and speed, kind of like a Captain Falcon. So because of that, you know, you're able to see a very quick turnaround for Roy and uh, as long as he was able to get that push, because 
while it's true that both of those characters tend to excel on uh, ground, that if you do get in the air, like Roy wins that one easily. Roy yeah. just has way more aerial options than than Little Mac does, and he doesn't have a ton of them. It's just compared to Little Mac, I mean, he looks like a pit. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just saying comparatively, that is the case. All right, so it looks like they're going to be going with Small Battlefield, and they're sending mm. in Ridley. So John is going to be playing Roy. Now he's played this one, this particular matchup a lot because. Uh, Titus actually mains Roy. And I know he's been training Titus a lot recently, so he knows the Roy matchup pretty well. There they go. We went dead. Really. Yep. That command grab does a stupid amount of damage. Uh, but Roy able to sort of get him out of it by using a very good use of his recovery move, up B. Uh, and that is a move that you see a lot of really good player Roy players use a lot. Okay, gonna try to stall him out with fireball. Oh, but oh, and back air, the dreaded Ridley back air. All right, gonna use skewer. Ooh, oh, and nice. back airs right on the top. All right, John takes one stop, and that's all he needs to move on to the next one. The only trouble here is that now they can counter pick Ridley. Yeah. So it looks like Bowser. they're gonna go with Bowser next, which is an interesting matchup. This should be fine. Now, the thing about Ridley is he has big sweeping attacks, which gives him an advantage against smaller opponents. Uh, but with Bowser, that's not a problem. <laughs> so. Uh, whoever really keeps advantage in this match is probably going to win this one because yeah. that's what Bowser and Ridley both do very well. Bowser is such a surprisingly fast character, too. Mm -hmm. So it should be a very upbeat game, I think. He is actually well. the fastest of the heavies. I'll, I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. I believe so it. he is quicker uh, than you would expect. Uh, and I think that was partly because they made him so, like, ridiculously bad and slow in some of the previous Smash games. Yeah. <laughs> they tried to make up for it. But, yeah, Bowser, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I expect uh, John to do really well against this one. Um, but, you know, this is just going to be kind of like we saw with the Little Mac-Roy uh, matchup. Just a couple of powerhouses going yeah. at it. Like, not a lot of not a lot of flair, not a lot of um, fancy moves, just like power versus power. So, Rumble in the jungle, but it's Smash. There you go. Be fun to see. Hopefully, yeah, John will be able to kind of keep Bowser at a, at a about an arm's length distance. That that's where Ridley kind of excels. Yep. As well. So small battlefield is going to be where they pick, and one of the good things about Ridley is that his he doesn't have quite perfect recovery, but it's close. And I have seen John recover from a Bowser bomb off the side of the wow. stage before. So if that does happen, I mean, I'm not saying he can do it every single time. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I've seen him do it before, so if somehow we get Bowser bombed off the side, it doesn't necessarily mean that he dies. Mm. Oh wow, good spinning for fortress there. And the infamous Bowser side A. Yes. And gonna nice. push him off the side. Oh. oh! Unfortunately, he gets a jump back from that, which allows him to get back on the ledge. Oh, and a little fire breath from a, for a fellow fire breather. Oh, wow. And stage spike. Very nice. See, that's where that really big hitbox comes in to a problem. And then body slams him, but John able to recover. Ah. Uh, He's going to hit from under stage. That's actually a surprisingly uh, small um, Bowser bomb. So 
So John pops out his neutral air a little too early and winds up missing the Bowser there. And that's going to give Bowser a chance to command grab. Oh, what just happened? I, I got to be honest, Caleb, I have no idea what just happened. Sometimes Smash does things, and I don't know what it does. <laughs> okay, let's go. All right, so that's another one. So now we're back to an even matchup, one versus one. Can John keep the lead for the Eagles? Nice forward air. Or forward A, sorry. Oh, Whirling Fortress. That has been uh, an issue for him this whole match is that Bowser keeps spamming Whirling Fortress, but it keeps working, so, you know. Alright, John getting a chance to reset there. And Bowser bombed. Alright. Nice. That's probably not going to be enough to kill. Yes, there it is. let's go, let's go. Alright, so John gives Faulkner the lead and gets his damage erased for the next stock. So he's got one more stock. Great performance by the newcomer. That was such an entertaining match. <laughs> it was so fun. Bowser versus Ridley. Yeah, lo lots of back and forth in that one for sure. And now he's going to be sending in Link. So that's going to be interesting. So Adult Link, of course, you've played him before. Yeah. And uh, you, you kind of subbed him. You never mained him. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's true. Okay. So, going into this, if you were in their shoes, what would you as a Link try to do with Ridley? What would your strategy be? Get above him. Get above? Get above Ridley. If I, I can see that. If I could do anything, that's what I would do. Um, I mean, Link... get above him or try to zone him, really. Yes, yeah, zoning would be where I would go with it. Granted, I'm, I don't play adult Link, and I know that young Link is better at zoning than adult link is so i that was my answer but i didn't know if that would be your answer um but yeah so i could see getting above him being a good strategy you've got plenty of uh, options like sword plant like bomb just throwing mm. bomb down on top of him uh that kind of thing but yeah i, I do think that zoning would be best because ridley really only has one range option and that's his neutral b of course the fireballs but link also has a shield which negates the fireballs yeah. so in that sense, I think that you actually do a lot better um, uh, with either either of those strategies. I think that Link wins. So I think what Ridley should be trying to do is just stay in close and keep advantage as much as possible. And by the way, we've seen John three stock people before, so it's not out of the question that he could do that. And uh, I do appreciate that this particular Link player is going to be using the best Link skin, the Fierce Deity skin. So that's pretty legit. I do love the Fierce Deity skin. Have you played Tears of the Kingdom? Yes. Yes. Not that much, though. I only have about five hours in the game. Oh, yeah. So you're just getting started. Yeah. Well, you can get the Fierce Deity skin, and in my opinion, it's the best. Uh, that's the best armor in the game because it gives you a substantial attack boost. In fact, I used it in my Ganondorf fight. Nice. Oh, yep. Good job. Good job on John realizing that he didn't need to do that because it would actually save him. Uh, so he could have attacked him, but he decided not to because he, he saw that he was far enough back that it wouldn't matter. Good game instincts there by Jehonan. Oh, and going to neutral, double neutral. And Link's neutral air there. Uh, it, a lot of people don't realize this, but that neutral air has like a drop down hitbox, so you can actually drop with his neutral air and hit from above, and it's a great field pressure. Dude. Really similar to Fox's neutral air. It's oh. the same kind of yep. drag down. Hit. 
does. Uh-oh. And a neutral air being used there as well. He's able to air dodge out of arrow. There we go. Ridley back nice. in control. Man grab. There we go. Command grab and... Oh, wow. I actually thought that was going to be a kill. Oh. There we go. Man, and very quickly, John able to get him down to one stock too. If he can take this last stock, man, uh, I might buy him dinner. <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> an interesting strategy there. Oh, that's it. Oh, wow. Yeah! And you can hear the excitement there in the background. John able to three stock the link. So man. Heck of a play there. So yes. now they're going to be sending in Impulse, who's the same Meta Knight player who okay. was able to beat him in the first round. But uh, John really stepped up his game there and able to three-stock the link. Man, what a run that, that the Eagles amazing. have gone on. Amazing. I'd like to think that I had at least a little something to do with that victory because he's played me on Young Link so much. Now, yeah. granted, not exactly the same, but close enough. Yeah. And he usually does that to me, so... <laughs> <laughs> all right so we have bound uh bound we have banned town and country pokemon stadium 2 and final destination so let's see what they pick we really have uh john and two other characters in the the background so hopefully we should pull this one off I think so. Yeah, we've still got Seth and um, Darian, right? Yeah. So. Okay, so they have picked Small Battlefield. So, again, Meta Knight on Small Battlefield, but Small Battlefield not a problem for Ridley. But the Meta Knight was in the last round, so we'll see if John can... I mean, if John pulls off another three stock, man. You need to buy him lunch and dinner. <laughs> Maybe so. From an undisclosed... Well, we go to Shane's Rib Shack. That's one of our sponsors. We can go to get him some barbecue. Ethan, we're, uh, we're in gameplay. Oh, thank you. There we go. Didn't miss anything. Just got to the taunts. Knock him out, John. Yep. And that Meta Knight's aerial game is so good. It's really impressive. But so John does go down, but this is kind of those things that I don't know. You're I know your dad's a big baseball fan. Are you a baseball fan? No. Oh, okay. No, I Man, baseball. He'll, he'll appreciate this analogy. It's kind of like um, when a pitcher like just pitches lights out for like six or seven innings, but then like in the last inning gives up a home run or two, and they have to pull him. Like, yeah. yeah, you're upset that he was able to give up the home run, but, I mean, everyone gives that guy a standing ovation yeah, when he walks out sure, if he if he's sure. playing, like, six or seven innings of just lights-out baseball. So that's kind of the sentiment I got from John exiting there. I mean, yeah, it was a quick loss, and, and yeah, that Meta Knight is really good, but at the same time, like, you got to you gotta tip your hat to sure. the performance he put on, taking out three characters like he did. Uh, three players, I should say. Three characters as well, but... All right, so it looks like they are deciding to send in Pit. So it's going to be Pit versus Meta Knight for this first one. And after that, if uh, if he can just take off 
a couple stocks. I mean, he, he could just win outright, but uh, if he can take off a couple stocks, Seth should be able to play clean up and, and do all right there. So they have banned Town and City, Kalos, and Halabastion. Garion played excellently in the first game, so hopefully yeah. he keep up the same yeah. momentum here. Yeah, Darian had a very good first round, yeah. so hopefully we should see something similar. And we're going to see how well he does here. So Pit versus Meta Knight is an interesting one. Uh... I, I do worry that because this Meta Knight is so good at aerial game that mm. it it may negate the fact that Pitt's biggest advantage is his aerial game. Three, I can see that two, being a problem. Darian is surprisingly uh really, really good at playing Pitt on the ground as well. He is. He I, I think part of that comes from his ability to just uh use arrow so well. Yeah. But so far, not able to put any damage on the Meta Knight. Is able to get a slash in right there. So I think one of the things that you're seeing there, and I think that it's not a bad strategy to have. Oh, wow. Is able to do that the second that Orbitars goes down in a very quick KO for Southeast Missouri. One of the things that you're noticing there, though, is uh, usually Darian recovers low, but he's actually, I think, rightly so, afraid to recover low because of how good this Mennonite is at getting these random stage spikes. Uh, so I understand why he's playing back a little bit. Very good use of neutral air there and able to do it again. Able to keep this Meta Knight off ledge, but you notice he's not going for spikes like he normally would because he's seen even John, probably our best player, able to do that. Oh, and is able to get a quick back air in there. Very nice. Oh, and able to get in a nice grab. Tries to combo into up air, but isn't quite able to do so. Meta Knight, like we were talking about, falls so quickly that he wasn't able to set that up well. Oh, good down air. Oh, man. Just a very good read by Meta Knight. That's it. Gets, a, gets one kill. If Darian can get one more, that will mean that the captain only has one stock left to take. That would be huge for the team. And you're seeing both of them doing a really good job at playing the uh, roll shield roll game. <laughs> oh, and uses down B to get that slash from behind him. Uh, and able to get a ceiling KO. This is a very talented Meta Knight player, no question about it. But good on Darian for taking off a stock and letting Faulkner keep the lead going into this final round. So, guys, this one is for all the marbles. Uh, yeah, if it. if Southeast Missouri wins, they win the game. If Faulkner wins, we go to a rubber match. And I do think that uh, it's anybody's game if we can go to a rubber match because now they've seen all our guys, we've seen all their guys, everything's on the table. And so that will be, uh, both on paper and in reality, probably the best determination of which team is actually better because now that all the cards are out on the table, we'll get a very good idea if we go to a rubber match um, where everybody stands and who actually the, the better team actually is. So that'll be an interesting lineup to happen if that happens. So they have they have banned uh, Final Destination, Kalos, and Town & Country.
certainly be a struggle this match for Seth to kind of keep up with a uh, character, especially as aggressive as they play it, but uh, mm -hmm. keep up with this faster character as Meta Knight. The same as who tends to play a little. Yeah, if I'm slowly. if I'm yeah. Seth, I probably play a dis a, a decent amount of zoning, probably more than he usually does. Yeah. Uh, he's not bad at zoning by any stretch of the imagination. He just tends to like the up close and personal battles more. But yeah, I zone a little bit more in this one than I normally do, and it's because despite Meta Knight's great speed, he doesn't actually have any ranged attacks, and his sword is actually quite tiny. So he has to get in very close for it to work. And Pokemon Stadium 2 is going to be the pick, which actually, I don't think it's a problem for Meta Knight either, but that's actually Seth's favorite to play Samus on. So uh, I don't think it'll be a problem for him either. And here we go. This will either be the last match of the game, or Faulkner will live to fight one more round. We'll see how it goes. Alright, very quick, able to get sort of sour spotted on that screw attack, so only able to catch the very edge of it. Uh oh. Oh man. And a very early KO for the captain, now they're back down to an even score anybody can do this in set. Absolutely. Uh oh. oh. What was that? Well that was a very bizarre turn of events. Seth's gonna have to pull off something pretty special here in order to win this one. Oh, and a really good combo there. Uses a baby charge shot and then follows up immediately with a down spin. And going to get him in, caught in screw attack right there. Able to catch him in screw attack there as well. That's really, really racking up the damage here. Yep. He's been in control for much of this. He just needs to get a really strong, like, a back air or something to get that kill. Uh-oh. And that's going to be game. Wow. Unfortunate way for that one to end. Uh, but that's going to be ball game. Southeast Missouri, credit to them. They had a really good Meta Knight. Um, and unfortunately, Seth has that unfortunate SD in the middle. Yeah. If that had not happened, you know, very good chance we would be looking at a rubber match now, but uh, just a very early KO and then a uh, unfortunate self-destruct. And then after that, there just wasn't much we could do to climb out of that hole. So unfortunately, Southeast Missouri wins this one by a score of two nothing. And we will head to a break here real quick and we'll be back in a second for the post game show. Bless the corners of this house and be the lintel blessed. Bless the hearth and every board and each place of rest and every door that opens wide to stranger as to kin and every crystal window pane that lets the stars at home I'm going home for solace and safety home where the world will not break me home never forsake me take me
and welcome in everybody to the post game show. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we just had a match with Southeast Missouri, and that uh, unfortunately did end in us. Oh, sorry. Uh, that unfortunately did end in us losing that win two nothing. But a real breakout performance by Jehonan, who is here with me right now. We're going to do the post game interview with him. So welcome in, Jehonan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so John, great job uh, that set in the middle. I know you you struggled a lot in that first set, but mm -hmm. you really seemed to come into your own on the second uh, set. What changed? Was it just you struggled with that Meta Knight specifically, or what was going on there? Uh, I was kind of in a bad mindset after the second stock in the first one that I that I that, uh, that took from me. Uh huh. Because uh, I knew I could beat the Meta Knight right if I really did just like play well but i was missing tax i was doing all that stuff so i just kind of got in a bad headspace mm -hmm. and beating the roy definitely helped i just needed like a quick win to probably get my mindset back on track understandable well uh i gotta say the uh it was an impressive performance but the way you were able to three stock the link with only one stock that was really fun what was the secret to being able to pull that off um there's a link player i played with a lot named suga he was super good. He uh, did a lot of really weird stuff, and he showed me good ways to counteract Link's, Link's bomb and stuff like that. So I was mainly going off of what he taught me. Yeah, I did notice you played with bomb quite a bit in there to where it was almost never actually in play. I don't think that he got you with bomb even once in that whole match. Uh, I think he got me once, and I teched it. Oh, well, maybe I missed that yeah. one. I, even know. so, that's still a part of playing around bomb. You still have to be able to tech it and all that stuff, so... Yeah, I will say, people get very scared of Link's Bomb, but it's really, mm -hmm. it doesn't do as much damage. It's really much more of a danger for a combo setup. Yeah. Uh, but uh, good job on that one, and also just the match in general. We kind of have to abbreviate the interview, because I know mm -hmm. uh, we've got another game coming up, and we've got a setup for that. So I'll go ahead and uh, let you know about that. But thank you so much, John, for coming in, and we certainly appreciate you uh, taking some time to talk to the audience, giving us a little bit of insight. And man... Heck of a game. Probably the best game you've played This is a pretty good one, yeah. Yeah. This is a good one for me. That had to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll make good on that. I'll buy you dinner at some point. Uh, <laughs> so we'll go to Shane's or something. All right. So uh, that's going to be it for uh, our interview with John. Thank you so much for being with us, Joan. And, and uh, we do want to let you know about some of the upcoming broadcasts we do have. Because like I said, we have another one coming up in just a few minutes. Tonight at 730, that is going to be League of Legends versus Cedarville. So we're playing the Yellow Jackets and the League of Legends team currently undefeated. So wanting to keep that streak going, hopefully they can uh, measure up to that. So they're going to be, they're actually already in there warming up and getting ready. And then uh, tonight we also have a Smash White game versus the University of South Florida. So unfortunately, because we have a League of Legends game going on at exactly the same time, we're not going to be able to air that one. But we are going to give you periodic updates on the game while that uh, broadcast is going on. So won't be able to give you uh, updates, you know, and actually uh, show it. But we will sporadically interject during the league game. Hey, this is what's going on with the Smash White team. So if you are interested in seeing what happens with that, you can tune into League of Legends and, and kind of get two games for the price of, one, uh, price of one. So that certainly helps. Our next Smash Bros game is going to be on Thursday, October the 26th. And that is going to be Smash Blue versus University of Tennessee Knoxville and then immediately after at 7:30 that's going to be uh same day next Thursday that is going to be Smash White versus John Brown University and I'm not sure if there's a League of Legends game that night as well I'd have to check the schedule but I believe we might actually be able to air that one so either way lots of Smash Brothers ha happening next week so be sure to check that out as well so that's going to be it for us this evening a special thanks to everybody that was helping with the game this evening uh ethan dixon who was doing production up until oh about two minutes ago when we started the uh post game show and then kp took over so we appreciate both of them stepping up and taking on that uh task of running the game and uh appreciate ethan being able to do so but he had to stop because league of legends is coming up and he's on the team so <laughs> we're gonna be watching him here in just a second he's actually getting warmed up right next to me in the arena uh so we will be bringing you that in just a moment a special thanks to our guest color commentary, Caleb Ote, a team member from last year. We appreciate him uh, being able to come out and do a great job giving us some commentary on Smash. And then finally, of course, I was doing the play-by-play. -play. I'm your head coach, Caleb Colquitt. And that's going to be it for us this evening. Until we come back in 
oh about uh 10 minutes so we'll be back <laughs> on the air uh very quickly hopefully uh we'll be able to see you there so be sure to stick around we're going to take a quick break reset some things and then we'll be back on for our league of legends broadcast until that happens stay the course friends the preceding broadcast was an official presentation of faulkner university it may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar Eagles!